let's try to solve this system of equations by graphing. And we're going to have some help from the calculator. Um, notice it's a pretty ugly system. We have this cubic with, you know, this lead coefficient of a half, and we have this negative absolute value function. Um, you might sort of imagine in your mind what the graph of these two things would look like. We have a cubic. It might look something like this. Positive cubic looks something like that. Um, and a negative absolute value would look like kind of an upside down V. So if we're trying to find the solution to this system of equations by graphing, what we want to do is graph each of these and find the intersection points. So if you imagine what this system looks like, a cubic and an upside down absolute value, you might imagine the number of possibilities for solutions. Um, down here, I've sort of used substitution to show another equation that's related to this um, system. If these expressions are both equal to y, then they must also be equal to each other. Um, so using substitution, here's another way of s getting started in solving this system. What we can do to solve this equation down at the bottom is plug one of these equations in for y1 in our calculator, the other in for y2, and find the intersection point. So let's do that. We have 0.5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 11 as our first function. Our second function is negative, so be careful about not forgetting that. Absolute value, which can be found under math, arrow over to num, it's the ABS um, option. Let's see, negative absolute value of x minus 3, I want to close the parentheses there, plus 9. If I graph that, right now I'm on the standard window. Sure enough, I can sort of see a cubic, and I can see some sort of upside-down V, but this picture isn't, isn't very good. Let's adjust the window. I want to see a little bit higher. So in our window, I'm going to increase our Y max from 10, um, maybe to 20. Let's see. Let's see what that does. That's a little bit better picture. Um, if I wanted to center this a little bit more, I know that the end behavior of these functions. I know that this is going to keep going up and up and up and down and down and down and over like that and to the right like that. I don't think there's going to be any more intersection points. So I want to really um, zoom in sort of on this on this right here. So I don't think we need to go out far to the left and to the right. I'm going to make my x min maybe negative 5 and maybe my x, x max 5. There we go. Sort of centered a little bit. I can really see what's going on a little bit better now. I want to find the intersection points, and now that I have a better window, I can see that it's pretty clear that there are three of them. Maybe I wasn't too sure about that before I adjusted the window. To find the intersection points, we're going to go to second calc, which is above the trace button. Choice five, which is intersect. First curve, you just want to make sure that the cursor is on the first curve, which is Y1. So as long as it says Y1 in the top left-hand part of your screen, we're fine. We can hit enter. And it should jump the cursor to y2. So it was asking for a second curve. Yep, we're on y2. So as long as you see that, we're fine. We can hit enter. Now it says guess. I want to sort of guess where that intersection point is. Put the cursor as close to it as I can. I just want to try to be close. There's our intersection point. So one of our solutions to this equation is x equals about negative 1.5. If we were solving this system, our y value that corresponds with this x value would be 4.46, uh, uh, roughly. We have to do the same process twice more, because there's two more solutions. Second calc intersect. First curve, yep, it says y1. Second curve, yep, it says y2. The reason it asks for first and second curve is because what if you had six functions graphed on your screen? It's asking you, you want the intersection of which two functions? We only have two functions on our screen, so that's why we just want y1 and y2. I'm now moving my cursor closer to the second intersection point that I can see. And here's our solution for our second intersection point. We just have to do that one more time. First curve, yep. Second curve, guess. Arrow over to that last intersection point. And there we go. There's our last intersection point. So solving by graphing is really useful because you can now solve really any equation ever out there, as long as you know how to type those functions into your calculator and find um, the intersection of the graph.